Good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery Smart Money Alliance in IIMFL. It's just a, a hair before eight o'clock central on Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. We get together just about every Monday through Friday at this time to, uh, to talk shop, talk strategy, address questions, and, and really exchange tips so we can help others and generate an adult earn income together. Let's go ahead and start with a quick review of our mission statement, and then we'll, we'll dig into today's topic. We are a nonprofit organization committed to narrowing the racial wealth gap by teaching financial literacy, improving credit scores, and facilitating the development of minority-owned small businesses. And as you know, crucial to that is providing access to capital. So today we're gonna to talk about generating leads, generating relationships, generating clients, and of course, generating income for you. So let's, let's reverse that order. If your goal is to generate income, then we need conversions. And for conversions, we're going to need leads. There are many different ways that we can go about connecting with the 28 million plus small business owners across the country. The good thing for us, which is uh, unfortunate for them, but nearly every small business wants and needs additional capital to start to grow, to reach their potential. So it's not like we're selling vacuum cleaners and we need to figure out who needs a vacuum cleaner. Just about every small business owner will benefit from more access to capital. And I'll go out a little bit on a ledge or a limb here and I would say just about, well, we'll just go all in. I think every small business owner would benefit from the educational curriculum that we're teaching. So with that being said, how do we get connected with these leads so we can generate sales to generate income? Many different ways to do that, but today we're gonna to focus on one specific way that has been summarized in three simple steps, as you see on your screen three simple steps. So the concept here is to begin working with key influencers. Key influencers fall under this category we call affinity partners, but they could be churches, chambers, co-working spaces, business organizations, business associations, so forth. What makes them a good affinity partner is that they have a sphere of influence. In other words, they have an existing relationship with a group of small business owners, preferably 100 or more, but, but we can be soft on that, that requirement. So how are we going to develop a relationship with these key influencers, which we're gonna call affinity partners, so we can generate leads to generate sales so you make good money? Well, we're gonna follow these, again, three simple steps. We're gonna start by identifying prospective affinity partners. And that's gonna be your responsibility. That's where you come in. So you can look at churches, chambers, and especially those organizations and associations that have a targeted audience towards minority populations, although we can work with any group. So Hispanic chambers of commerce, African-American, chambers of commerce and so forth are, are great, but you follow. So what you need to do is number one right here, it's your job to identify these prospective partners. It's not very difficult to do. Then what you're going to do is reach out to them and say as little as possible, but share the affinity proposal, which we emailed out to you. It was an attachment here, and it's also on our website. I'll show you where it is in just a moment so you can download it. And then go ahead and share with them a sample lesson. And this lesson is also uh, that link's available on our website. Because as you know, we take clients through a four-step, a four-week process, each with an educational step and then an implementation step. This is one of those four educational messages. I believe, and you can tell me if you disagree and you won't hurt my feelings, I believe that just about any key influencer that will take the time to listen to this lesson, we've got about a 90% chance of, of locking a, a relationship in with them. 
because what we're doing is so important. We're using award-winning curriculum developed by the FDIC, promoted by the SBA. We're not bastardizing it. We're not making it some sort of different spin to serve our purposes. We're using this good educational information and then offering to assist every participant in implementing what they've learned. So if you're not familiar with the affinity proposal slash agreement, I think you should be, you should read it. It's a couple pages long. And again, I'll show you where it sits. And then secondly, if you're not intimately familiar with this sample lesson, I think you should be because it's really good information and it contains a, a lot of, of our message. What we're doing is, is not rocket science, but we're increasing the financial literacy of small business owners. And, and you can go through this lesson, this sample lesson, and probably pick three, four, or five key misconceptions, myths, misunderstandings that the typical entrepreneur has. And those are some of the significant obstacles that's keeping them from being able to access capital. So step one is identify who you wanna work with. Step two, share the PDF and encourage them to watch the sample lesson and then schedule a three-way call for us using our Calendly link. This prevents you from having to do the hefty, heavy lifting. You don't have to explain it all to them. You don't have to overcome objections. We're here to do that. So why would you wanna do this? Number one, it's easy. Frankly, you introduce, schedule the call for the three of us and, and we'll do the heavy lifting from there. Secondly, it's very profitable. Regardless of what your role in our relationship is, you might be an affiliate, you might be a financial literacy educator, you might be a branch office manager, or even a joint venture partner as we talked about yesterday. But regardless, these are the three steps. It's painfully simple and you'll generate anywhere a thousand or more depending upon which role you're in. Of course, joint venture partners earn the most. This is a concept of leverage, right? What could you do with your day? You could contact a bunch of individual small business owners, which isn't a really bad idea, but an even better idea is to contact a number of key influencers, because as we always say, that's like hooking your, your hose to a running faucet. They have a much larger sphere and a more credible relationship with their sphere of influence than you're ever gonna be able to accomplish, most likely. This is credible, and I've already talked about that, and, and we've already talked about how badly needed this is. I realize you may be fortunate, and, and maybe money is not of concern to you, but the typical entrepreneur is feeling some financial stress in today's marketplace. And so we're, we're solving a problem, we've got an innovative solution, and what we're offering to do just makes perfect sense. Hey, let's collaborate to help the small businesses that are within your association, your organization, your chamber, your congregation, so forth, become more financially literate and help them provide increased access to capital through a grant subsidized four week program. Let me show you how it works. And then uh, let's go ahead and navigate over for a second and get to where the actual documents are to make sure that uh, there's no, no constraints there. So let's pull this up, okay. So we're now on the IIMFL website, not on the homepage, I'm over here on the small business certification. And we talked about the affinity proposal. The proposal and agreements one and the same, by the way. So here it sits, so you can click on this gray box and it'll download. So you can share it with them or you can just point them here. Also, we talked about the sample lesson. It's right here. We're focusing on the sample, th uh, the, the lesson from week three, because I, I think it's gonna have the greatest impact to, um, to the prospective hosts. And that's it. So in, in nine minutes or so, I've shared with you what I wanted to share with you today. Here are the three simple steps, what to do, how to do it, and why to do it. So now it's your turn. What I'd like from each of you, type into the Q&A, kind of like a chat box on, on Zoom here, what questions, comments, concerns do you have about following this three-step process? Because I know it's working. 
We hired a call center that's based in some third world country, not demeaning that, just giving you the background, and they make calls and they're scheduling appointments and we're securing affinity relationships. It's working for us. There's absolutely no reason that you couldn't do that. And frankly, you should be more effective than they are. They're good people, but you're here local and you have relationships with some of these organizations and you might even know some of these organizations so they're not all cold. But I can tell you, our third world telemarketers don't know any of them. They're just doing Google searches and making calls. So it's your turn now to tell me what questions, comments, concerns you have about this three-step process. Because frankly, if you don't have any questions, comments, or concerns, we probably should implement. We probably should start following these three steps because it's gonna generate money for you and help others. All right, so Ahmad, Alyssa, Angela, Annette, April, Barry, Christopher, Elena, Jackie, Jennifer, Joseph, Monique, Peggy, Peter, Robert, Sanya, Sharon, Tubby, Will, William, and, and William again, three different Wills or Williams. I'm, I'm looking for your questions, comments, and feedback because we're not seeing a whole lot of activity from most of you on developing these affinity relationships. <laughs> well, Peg, Peggy's gonna stop me in the tracks. Yeah, she, she's already got two coming on board. So uh, understood, Peggy. But for the rest of you that, that are not following the simple three-step process, please help me understand. I'm not judging you, not being negative. Tell me what we need to do different. So somehow, some way you can follow those three steps. We can start developing affinity relationships together and you can start earning significant income by helping others. All right, so Jackie's asking, can you share the call center program implementation model? Well, here's what we did. We went to Upwork and we hired a couple different telemarketing groups to see what worked. We found one worked best, the one that we ended up retaining. Uh, we're hiring two full-time telemarketers and they're agreeing to make 300 calls a day uh, for, uh, well, three, 300 calls a day. And so with that, they're scheduling appointments for us with affinity prospects. There's really not much magic to it. So uh, we wouldn't sell those leads to you because we've already generated that affinity lead. We paid the call center and we pay them 3000 a month. So we've paid them and we've already generated the lead. So there's really nothing for you to do on that lead. But what you could do, Jackie, is replicate that and be able to earn income yourself by generating affinity relationships. Hopefully that made sense, Jackie, but let me know if I didn't answer your question. Yes, thanks, uh, great job, Peggy. Sharon, yeah, yeah, the three simple step process, it's, it is painfully simple, painfully simple. Now, again, that three step process is targeting key influencers, right? So you wouldn't just go to Joe Smith, the small employer and say, wouldn't you want to be an affinity partner? That's not the, the model. It needs to be an existing organization or entity or possibly person, but that, that has already typically a hundred or more small business clients, members, so forth. So you could stretch it out even and say, well, couldn't you go to CPAs and do this? Couldn't you do, go to business bankers and do this? Well, maybe. I mean, business bankers aren't going to accept uh, compensation back from you. CPAs is not a bad target audience, but it's really associations and organizations. So churches, chambers, organizations, associations is your bread and butter. You could also do co-working spaces. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of you on this webinar, which I'm appreciative of, but I'm looking for more feedback. Where are we missing the boat? What can we do to help you follow this three-step process so you can earn some adult income and we can help more people together? So Ahmad, what do you think? Alyssa, go ahead and type into the Q&A your thoughts, please. Angela, let us know your thoughts, please. Annette, what, what are you thinking? Do you wanna follow these three steps? Barry, what do you have to say about this? Bill, thanks for joining the call. Can you follow the three-step process? Christopher, thanks for being on this morning. What questions do you have that we can help you with? Doug, thanks for jumping on. 
Do you understand the three-step process or would you like me to cover it again? I don't mind at all. Elena, what do you think? Can you do it? Will you do it? Jackie, your thoughts? Joseph, being a realtor, you've got a good sphere of influence. Joseph, can, can you do this? Can you follow these three steps? Monique, I think, is coming aboard as a, a white label partner, so I'll leave you alone. Uh, Peter, uh, okay, so we got a few questions. Okay, so uh, we got some requests to go through the three steps again, which is fine. That's what we're here to do. So let's take it from the top. So there's three steps to help you generate significant income while helping others. The three steps were emailed to you and they're shown here on the page. Number one, identify prospective affinity partners. They can be local or they can be far away. It's up to you. Second, share the attached PDF, which I emailed to you and it's also on the website. I just showed you where it is and give them a sample lesson. Step three is schedule a three-way call for them, you, and us using this link. That's it. And so, Bill, yes, we've gone through, we've talked a little bit about the scripts, but, but you know, don't worry about specific wording. What you want to do is just say as little as possible to get these two resources to them, the attached PDF and the sample lesson, and schedule a three-way call. So you want to say as little, write as little as necessary to get these two resources to them and schedule a three-way call. All right, so Peter is following up with his affinity prospects. Thank you, Peter. Alyssa says she's just starting the program. Well, that's fine, but, but, but that's really not an answer to this, right? Because if you're either an affiliate, an educator, a branch manager, or a joint venture partner, we're distribution partners together, right? And so it doesn't matter if, if someone just started 17 minutes ago, right before the Zoom, or you started 17 months ago. These are the three steps. There's, there's no learning curve hardly to it, right? Just identify some affinity partners. Go ahead and, of course, review the PDF, get familiar with that, and go through the sample lesson, and then schedule a three-way call. Simple, simple, simple. Jackie's going to try it this week. Thank you, Jackie. And Sharon's asking if she can go through the program. Sure, yeah, I'd encourage you to go through the program. Let's go back over there because if, if you go through this, you're going to understand it better than if you don't. But it's not a requirement that you go through it. But sure, Sharon, yeah. It, become a client yourself. Go through these four steps. That is perfect. Annette says, yep, she can implement it. And we covered it for Alyssa. Bill says he's on board. Christopher says, super easy. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you that, let's talk about some potential objections or challenges you may face, because I, I don't want to paint a picture like it's going to be a perfect batting average. Number one is as you, you know, get this affinity proposal and the sample lesson out to people, number one, it's sometimes hard to reach the decision maker, especially with uh, closed offices or limited staffing. So that could be one challenge of actually getting to that party. So it may require some diligence. It may require some follow-up. And it probably should include not just a blanket email, a blind email to the CEO of the local black chamber, but a combination of emailing that information to them and a phone call. So let's do with this, uh, like Bill here. So uh, Bill's asking for a script. So Bill, we're gonna role play for a second. And so what I'd probably do is, let's say that I found that Bill Tujois is the uh, executive director of an African-American chamber, for example. And so I probably found that on, on their website. And so I'd probably go ahead and send him a quick email with the affinity proposal, and a link to the sample lesson to encourage him. So I just email it to him out of the blue. And then I'd turn around right afterwards, and I'd give him a call. And chances are he's not gonna answer, or I'm gonna get his voicemail, I understand that. But, but my, my 
words are about the same, whether he picks up the phone or not. So I'll just pretend that he answers, but I understand I might not get him. I may have to leave voicemail. And I'd say, hey, Bill, my name's Tom. I'm with a nonprofit called the IIMFL, Institute for Improved Minority Financial Literacy. We're looking to collaborate with your organization to help narrow the racial wealth gap by teaching financial literacy, improving credit scores, and increasing access to capital. I just emailed you, Bill, a proposal, no cost to you, of course, and one of our sample lessons. Please do me a favor. Take a look at that and just let me know what you think. Good to talk to you. My number is 555-555-5555. Look forward to talking to you soon. If I don't hear back from you in the next couple of days, I'll be giving you a call. Thanks, Bill. And something like that. And so then you've, you've made two points of contact with Bill, the prospective key influencer, both via email, which probably would have not been read or, or deleted if you didn't also supplement it with a call. Now, if Bill answered, I would have said just about the same thing, but I would have gone ahead and said, well, Bill, let's go ahead and schedule a, a call and uh, we'll schedule it a couple days out. And that way, between now and then, you will have had a chance to review the proposal, maybe look at the sample lesson. And if you don't feel that it's worth your time, we'll go ahead and cancel the appointment afterwards. But I, I think you'll find it very useful. And so that's really it. Uh, Angela says she started to make calls to a few churches. Good. Yeah, churches are great. You know, uh, churches have, have been known for teaching financial or, or comp being a conduit for teaching financial literacy through Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. We're not competing or conflicting with that. We just have a different message to a different audience. Our focus is on pre-launch and startup entrepreneurs. His focus is, is, of course, on the general public. But what you and I know is a lot of people do own a small business and many more would like to, but they lack the knowledge and, re and or the resources to implement. So uh, yes, very good on, on reaching out to churches, Angela. Uh, Joseph asked about who's gonna be on the three-way call. So it would be you, it would be the prospective affinity partner slash host, and one of us from, from our office here. Okay, what other questions do any of you have about this simple three-step process? Let's go back over to it. Hopefully my screen's showing it right now. Hopefully you see the, the email that was sent out yesterday in preparation for today's call. So what questions does anyone else have? Concerns? complaints, anything about this three-step process that we ask you to pursue. Now, this doesn't mean stop reaching out to individual small businesses. Of course not. This, though, should be part of your, your outreach campaign. If you're a branch office manager, the expectation's a lot higher, right? You should be identifying every key influencer in your four zip code area, and they need to know you by name, right? So if you're a branch office manager, the expectation is much higher. If you're a financial literacy educator, you'll want to do this because you're going to get paid like we're talking about. Plus, plus, you're going to be writing the key person policies. If you're just a flat out affiliate, great. Just do this. You have no other responsibility and the money just comes to you. And of course, if you're a joint venture partner, we're probably putting together a strategy to do this on a large scale. Our joint venture, and we also call them white label partners, are more of our national partners. They're usually focused on bigger implementations. But regardless, this three-step model works regardless of your, uh, your role. So thank you, Jackie. And, and this is what we want to start doing. Our goal, and I hate to even say it because it'll hold me accountable, but really our goal is to start with, start, start having three-step processes. So anything that we're going to ask you to do, if we can't concisely state it in three steps, it's probably too complicated. Not because you don't have the ability to follow more than three steps, but we realize we live this, eat this, breathe this every day. You're juggling this with other balls, other priorities, work, home, what have you. And so we need to do a really good job to break this down into bite-sized action-oriented steps. And this is an example of that. 
Okay, uh, Joseph had a good call with April, looks very promising. Excellent, excellent. So does anyone else, before we end the call today, have any questions, comments, or concerns about this three-step process? All right, Doug's asking, well, what happens after? So thank you, Doug, for asking. So we'll, we'll have this three-way call, and uh, we will send them a DocuSign version of the affiliate agreement, the proposal. And so then if they choose to execute, it doesn't cost them anything, and it's not punitive, but it just formalizes the, the intent to collaborate. So then once they execute that, then we're past you know, dating, and now we're married, if, if you uh, will forgive me for the expression. So now we're just focused on implementation. So then we need to work, uh, then we'll work with them on developing a campaign to roll this out to their sphere of influence. If it means that we're providing them press releases, flyers, uh, we'll find out if they want to do education in person or remote based or some combination of the two. For example, we uh, signed a, a deal with the National Association of Black Women in Construction, NABWIC. And so that's a national organization. So they flew me out to Fort Lauderdale and I presented to their uh, at their national conference in, in Fort Lauderdale. They also have local chapters that becomes impractical for us to get in front of every one of those local chapters. Therefore, we, we do more Zoom based. So the point is, don't worry about the implementation details. If the, the affinity partner wants to work with us and we want to work with them, we'll execute the agreement, then we figure out the specific implementation. And the specific implementation, of course, is going to be targeted to their preferences because they know this group of people. They know how they communicate with them. They know, in general, what works and what doesn't. So we're going to provide the content necessary to flow in their current communication stream. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. So hopefully that helped. Thank you, uh, Doug, for asking that. Any other questions that um, may be not clear, that's confusing, that's conflicting, anything that would prevent you from at the conclusion of this webinar to implement these three simple steps. Now, what I would encourage you to do, and I don't want to overburden you, pick 10, research and find at least 10, because it's always too good to be true, you know, that, that every affinity partner is going to say yes. Some will say yes, some, some will say no, some will just say not yet. But we need a big enough sample size because you might hit a home run. Like Peggy, I think, talked to two and two said yes. So that's wonderful. But, but in general, that's not going to happen that quickly. So let's commit to identifying at least 10 prospective affinity partners this week, getting the PDF and the sample lesson out to them. And of course, you should be familiar with both of these, but it's not your burden to explain it. Just imagine yourself as an appointment setter. I know that you're more skilled, smarter, more knowledgeable than what you need to be to be an appointment setter. But if we can start with that simple of a role that will reduce your stress possibly and, and your, your barriers to doing this. You know, we hired someone in a third world country, again, great person, don't get me wrong, but, but they don't know really anything about what we're doing. But they're simply able to make a connection with affinity partner and schedule appointments and share these documents. So if they can do it, obviously you can do it. But just don't let yourself become the message. Instead, get them the information, schedule the call, and then um, we'll take it from there. Any other questions, comments, concerns before we, we wrap it up today? So the challenge to each of you is to please consider, so Bill's asked about the scripts. We've talked through the scripts. There's no specific script. You understand the intent, but, but we did walk through the script. And in fact, the script that we talked about was uh, what you and I just role played with you, Bill. So we're gonna find 10 prospective affinity partners this week reach out to them via phone and email, get them the attached PDF as well as the sample lesson, and get as many of those scheduled as, as possible. Now I realize we won't connect with all 10, not all of them will agree to schedule right away, but if we contact 10, 
we should have three to five appointments scheduled most likely next week. Thank you, Sharon. All right. Well, it's our pleasure to collaborate with you. We have a great opportunity to, uh, to make a significant impact, and uh, we look forward to working with you and, and making this happen. Have a great day. We'll see you back same time tomorrow morning.